Hey guys, um, for this video I'm going to be doing, uh, you know, a lesser known movie. It's called The Laugh Laugh, La The Last Laugh. Um, it's a black and white German film, a uh, silent film. And it's on the list of 101 movies to see before you die, so I happen to have it. So I thought I'd just go ahead and watch it. Um, uh, I, like, I, I, I know nothing about this movie at all. I don't even know, you know, what this genre is or what the tone's supposed to be. Um, I just know the name. Um, so, that being said, let's just get right on into the movie and see what we got. So it's from 1924, I guess? And like the older, you know, movies, you get like the film with the specs and everything like that. I obviously know this song, um, or I've heard of it. I can't remember what was what the song name was, but it seemed to be like an upbeat, uh, upbeat song. So I'm wondering if that's gonna be like more of a comedy. So you can hear car noise and everything. I'm assuming that's added after the fact. So that's, you know, what the kind of juxtaposition, you know, we get this, you know, he works at like this hotel that has like a lot of rich people and he helps them just get into cars and stuff and then he actually lives in a more run down area. It's kind of fascinating to see how they, you know, did all this in the you know, older, I want to say olden times, <laughs> you know, they would light the lamps and then they would go around putting them out with the, you know, the poles. Interesting. I'm going to let it go off first. So it's in the English. Are, is that one another instance of them like putting it in English or like, you know, making a, a film, um, you know, in, interspersing like the German version for the English version? Or was this actually, you know, from the real version? I know set like in Nosferatu they did that. So they're are they getting married? I thought he was a lot older. I guess it's black and white, it just makes him look older. Oh, she wants to get married but he doesn't want to. Which is the creepy look. So you notice they treat him differently? Is it because he, you know, is a doorman at the, the, you know, rich hotel? So I guess they don't actually fire him, they're just transferring him. What are you doing? What are you doing? Dumbass is destroying the blinds. Can you come up here? Come on. Come on, Hanson. Come on. Well, I'm assuming he's gonna be fired now. Hey, buddy. You handsome little boy. Yes, you would. So now what? Is he just like room service or, or whatever. You gotta think that'd be more taxing than just, you know, helping people with the cars. So I'm assuming they did it because, 
you know, they did it, they did it more for Lux, you know, uh, demoting him. So he was actually the groom, you know, I'm assuming it's his daughter, you know, marrying another man. The reason why they did that whole scene was it because he couldn't make it to her wedding because he was working. Interesting. Because it's obviously supposed to be from his viewpoint, he's drunk, so it's all blurry and warped. Ah, oh, so what? Uh, he's the one who's there for them when they wash their hands. Is that supposed to be his wife? Really can't pick up your own towel. Did you not think that they'd already know because he saw him, you know, at work? Why is everyone being such a dick to him? Seriously. They're all treating him so good and everything. What? Because they thought he was in a prestigious position, but now what? He's still working, but was, I guess, demoted, so now they're treating him like shit. It, it would make sense if he always thought himself to be better than everyone else, but he's showing nothing but kindness to everyone. Feels like they're just dicks. Honestly, it seems like the night guard was the only one who gave two shits about him. people or dicks or at least the people he grew up with or, or lived with. I'm, a, I'm not sure. Did they disown him? Did they throw him out when they learned that he no longer was a doorman? Is that why he ultimately ended up going to going back to the hotel? And I'm assuming it was a hotel and uh, eventually went back into the bathroom. So the ending, the guys like um like uh, a multi-millionaire died and I'm assuming he died in that guy's arms um which I don't recall remembering so I'm assuming it happened after and uh I, I do kind of like that the guy you don't even know his name I don't think just a doorman he despite being rich he never let it get to his head. He was, uh, you know, he was uh, generous with whoever was kind to him and just anybody who was kind of run down and needed help, he was extremely kind to him. And, uh, you know, he was that way before and, and it's nice that being rich didn't affect that. It just allowed him to help those, you know, people more. So, um, but yeah, um, so that's kind of my thoughts on this movie. Uh, let's see, I don't, I'm not sure if there's any trivia. <clears throat> there is not much at all, but I'll just, uh, give a, a, a I'll say what, uh, there is. 
So the film only used title cards to explain the job replacement, and in the end of the epilogue, none of them were ever used for dialogue. That's so I noticed that right away. Um, whenever they were talking, they didn't use title cards to try to explain what was happening. They really just relied on visuals. Um, the first dolly device that used a camera to move during a shot was created for this film. According to Edgar G. Ulmer, who worked on the film, the idea to make the first dolly come from the desire to focus on Emil Janning's face during the first shot of the movie as he moved to the hotel. They obviously didn't know how to make a dolly technically, so they created a first one out of a baby's carriage. Then they pulled the carriage on a sort of railway that was built on the studio. The film is included on Roger Ebert's Great Movies list. Assuming its copyright has not lapsed already, this film and all other produced in 24 into the U.S. public domain in 2020. Well, that's good for me. <laughs> um, included among, yeah, I already did that. Um, actor, director, Lupa Pike, Lupu, Pick, who had worked with writer Carl Mayers before, was originally supposed to play the doorman, but got into a disagreement over the way the character was portrayed. And so was placed by Emil Jannings. The film has a 100% rating based on 28 critic reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. Let's go see if that still is a fact. Rotten Tomatoes got into the habit of uh, going and just finding random ass reviews from like outside sources so they don't even put it in there themselves, the ratings, just so they can knock. You know, 100% rating movies down. You know, no longer 100%. So it's so fucking... Such kind of a dick move, to be honest. Well, it still has a 100% ratings uh, for, uh, you know, Rotten Tomatoes. Well, of course, there's only 28 reviews, but uh, see if that lasts. But yeah, so that was my viewing of uh, The Last Laugh. I, I did enjoy it. It kind of a little different because, well, one, there wasn't any dialogue except for like the bit at the end, um, transitioning from where he was to where he ended up, um, and then like, Ty Carter explain, you know, his job, him losing his job and all that, so. Um, but yeah, if you've uh, seen this movie, have any thoughts on it, just let me down below. Let me know down below. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe, get notifications for all the different videos I'll be doing. And um, yeah, um, just you guys stay safe out there, and um, I'll talk to you later. Bye.